Hello everyone and welcome to Intensely Relaxed Gaming. With me as always is Daz. Hi. And I am Matt. Um, today we are trying out for first time on this channel and it's not a game we're particularly experienced with. We've played it before. A couple, I think it might have been the first edition that we played, but without further ado, it is going to be um, Star Wars X-Wing 2nd Edition by Fantasy Flight Games. We've got a few um, different various models. We're just going to be doing some battle reports um, of us just mucking about with different sort of setups. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be anything to do with like meta comps or anything like that. We, we don't know some of that stuff. Maybe that <laughs> maybe we'll get into that towards the end of it. Um, but it's it. we've had a, a trial game before. Yeah. We've recorded. How did you find it? I quite like I quite enjoyed it. It's quite quick, isn't it's it? It's quick, um, yeah. It's the tactics, I think. Yeah, try not yeah. to run into like asteroids and, and debris yeah, fields. Yeah, do that a lot. <laughs> so, without further ado, um, please join us for our first battle report of X Wing. See you soon. Hello everyone and you join us as Luke Horton and a Blue Squadron Escort face off against uh, the Grand Inquisitor Iden Verso, Howl Runner and a Night Beast, or Night Beast, <laughs> it is their name, they're fair, uh, facing off in two pairs. First round is not going to come with any surprises, basically just jockeying for position, they're moving up, taking focus tokens, no one's really going to be within shooting range. Uh, this turn, but it's all just to see exactly how things are going to line up um, So as I say moving forward a couple of barrel rolls um, just to maintain the uh, Shooting lines um, coming forward and again, they're staying in pairs to maintain the bonuses uh, that some of them have about re-rolls and, and etc um, Again Horton just moving up into the center just to make sure those firing arcs are, are they're going to be nicely set up for the second turn. And last of all, Luke moving up. Being quite brave, taking central position. He's sort of two versus one on that side, but feeling confident. Last of all comes through Howl Runner. And that is the end of round one. Checking out the quick position, nothing really doing. So the Blue Squadron Escort is just going to slightly bank round. Uh, just checking um, everything and putting a target lock on Howl Runner. Night Beast shifting up and just checking to see how what their range is. Um, he's going to be taking a focus token. Horton very slowly going to be moving up. Wants to keep the range for the photon torpedoes. Um, then we have Iden moving up and he's cochraning. I think he's anticipating what Luke's going to do. It'll be interesting to see whether that works out. Uh, no, Luke's banking, so all that stress and, and quite out of position now, Luke takes a focus. Grand Inquisitor is... I think they're going to have thought Luke was going to go straight ahead still. No, nope. <laughs> he has Cochrane in right in front of him. So stressing themselves out and giving Luke perfect arcs. And just to finish it off, Iden is Cochraning as well with Horton right in the rear arc. <laughs> So we go into the combat phase and it is going to be Luke that's going to try shooting first. He's going to go into the Grand Inquisitor. It took one damage coming in from the debris field, but he's going to spend uh, a force, I think, just to negate that attack. Yeah, he's been fine. Then it is going to be none of their five. So it's going to be Horton, I believe, next, firing into the rear of Hal Runner. Manages to get two hits. Uh, only two defense because of it. he's got the outmaneuver and he manages to take off the shield of Howl Runner from the shield upgrade. Then it is going to be the Blue Squadron Escort doing two damage um, onto the onto Howl Runner again. Sorry, he wasn't firing on Night Beast; he was firing on um, the Howl Runner, and then Night Beast does nothing in return. Start of round three. It's looking a bit of a mess on the Imperial side. They're massively out of position um, from the anticipating of exactly where the, the Rebels were going to go. They're trying to jockey back into position and, and, and predict where they're going. Um, 
then we have the blue squadron escort's going to sweep through, maybe get a rear firing arc on the um, in, uh, Grand, Imprisi uh, Grand Inquisitor. He's going to also barrel roll just to make sure that he does stay in line of sight for him. Aiden's uh, moving up and sweeping back around, trying to get back into position. Um, in comes Horton, but he's hit into the back of the escort, so there's not going to be an action for him. Oh, we've made a mistake there because Horton is barrel rolling. Please note that he shouldn't have been able to do that. Then we have uh, Howl Runner. Howl Runner's going to come through, trying to gain some space, some much needed space. Um, then Luke is going to swing back round. Um, so they're sort of sw swinging past each other to take on um, those on the tails of their, their colleagues and their wingmates. And then we of course have the Inquisitor, I think he's just trying to avoid the debris field. Luke is going to shoot onto Night Beast, managing to land a good couple of hits there. He has also got force to spend for that focus to, if, it, if he's needing it, but currently the Night Beast is dead, so he's going to need to roll some evades here which he does he does get two actually so currently it's only one damage so probably worth it i reckon he is yeah he's spending it to change that so night beast is down to one hit point um neither the inquisitor nor how runner can fire so it's going to be horton that's going to go next i believe he's just trying to work out who he can fire into what's going to be effective he's got the photon to uh, proton torpedo where's photon from star trek Proton torpedoes, but he's just going for his standard shot. Oh, and but it's defended, so the Grand Inquisitor has managed to defend that shot for no damage. Um, then we have, I think it is going to be Night Beast first. Yep, Night Beast is going to fire into Horton. I think he's just trying to see if he's got him at range one, um, but he hasn't, so it's one damage currently which isn't defended, so one off Horton's shields, taking him to one remaining. Last of all, we've got the Escort. He's going to try and take a shot at the Inquisitor. He's got him at range three, though, and given the roll so far, the Inquisitor's probably going to shrug this off, but let's see. One attack. You would like to think, yeah, there we go, easily defended. Start of round four, then. We're just going to take a quick look around. Got all the rebels sort of clustering in the middle, flying past one another to c cover their sixes of their um, wingmen. Inquisitor still massively out of position. Iden also trying desperately to crawl back around and get in position as well. Blue Squadron Escort gets things kicked off. He's going to swing round, trying to get onto the tail and barrel roll, trying to really get on the tail of Iden, who's, uh, or Howl Runner rather, who's only got one hit point remaining. We have Night Beast then moving up, but he is going to hit straight into Horton there, so no action point again. Then Horton's going to move, just need to get Luke out of the way. Come on, Luke. He's going to swing through again, just trying to keep um, those further away uh, ties in line of sight for some proton torpedo fun. And he swing. Oh, his action is also to swing his turret round to face the rear. So he's got a couple of options there. Iden swings back round before Luke is going to try and bank. Oh, he's actually going to talon here. He's hit. We've made a mistake there. He shouldn't have been able to 90 to be pivot if he's um, not been able to complete his move. Um, so it's something to pick up for next time. And then Hal Runner is going to Cochrane to try and finally bring his guns to bear. At least get one shot off before he goes. And the Inquisitor, off in his merry journeys. I think he's he's been in lockdown as well. <laughs> he's just tried it. He's going out for an holiday. I don't blame him. So we start off with Luke. He manages to get one hit, um, but nothing doing there whatsoever. Been able to defend that easily enough. Um, and he was actually going for Iden over there, so it was a long range shot, hence the additional evade dice. Uh, Blue Squadron Escort suffering from Howl Runner manages to get one dodge um, but does take one damage on the shield. Um, we're then looking at Horton perhaps firing his guns backwards or is he going to fire? No, he's going to fire the Proton Torpedo into Aiden who easily defends it. No, nothing doing there. 
Then we go down to Iden, but he can't shoot. So now it is down to the escort firing into Howl Runner, and he's gone. There's no way he's going to defend that. He's out of there. One hit point remaining blows up. Um, and then Night Beast firing into the back of Horton. What's he able to do here? Uh, he, I don't know where he, where he got the fourth dice from, but he, he's done a, a damage, a couple of damage there to Horton. Um, at the start of round five, quick recap of where the ships are. So we have Hort still the rebels nicely contained in the middle, and the X-wings um, uh, and the Tie Fighters rather all over the place out of position here. So we're starting with Night Beast, who is going to smash straight into the back of Horton. He's trying to avoid the debris on one side. And then we've got the Escort just slightly moving up here, trying to keep um, Aiden into shot, who promptly goes straight into the front of him. No action for him. Horton moving up, looking like they're trying to all capitalise on Aiden's isolation there. We have the Quisitor Talon rolling over to the side to try and sweep back in. And then the firing starts. So it is going to be, I think, Luke first of all. It is Luke. Absolutely shocking roll. Uh, um, yeah, there's no point even spending force to do that. So then the return fire from Aiden is going to land a good couple of hits. This blue squadron is taken down to two hit points. Then we have Horton, he is going to use the rear cannons this time, facing backwards at Night Beast. See if he can manage to take him out with those lovely little 360, well it's not 360, he has to aim them, but only one hit though. And that is dodged, so nothing, Night Beast manages to survive there. And then it is going to be the Night Beast firing into Horton, who managed to get one dodge, he has taken no damage, no damage, the other one was a miss, couldn't quite see that on camera. And finally the Blue Squadron Escort is going to fire into Aiden. Got two hits there, no defences, so he's going to try and re-roll with the target lock and see if he can finish him off. Unfortunately he can't, but he does take Aiden down to one hit point. So at the start of round six, we've got the Grand Inquisitor out in the middle of nowhere really and then Aiden and Night Beast on one hit point each. We do have the Blue Squadron Escort low but otherwise it's looking pretty good for the for the Rebels. Um, Blue Squadron Escort kicks things off just sweeping back round and Talon rolling so he's going to stress out from that. Then it is going to be Night Beast who loves Horton. He's smashing straight into him again no action but keeping him in the rear arc at least. Horton is going to flip back round with the Cochrane, stressing themselves out even more. Um, then Iden's going to swing back round, manages to avoid taking damage from the asteroid, um, but he's going to hit Luke in the process anyway, so no action, not that he would have got one anyway. And then Luke is going to tell on himself, so everyone's stressing themselves out, almost no one got to take an action here. Um, even the Grand Inquisitor trying to desperately get back into battle can't clear. So he, Luke's going to kick things off, managing to do two damage, and it isn't defended. So that's Aiden blowing up straight away, straight at the start, start of this combat round. It, uh, Rebel's taking a real commanding position here. Got the Grand Inquisitor, I think, making his first shot in anger in this battle. He's got. Um, the blue squadron in his front firing arc there, as we just try and pivot the camera around a bit. Pivot! Um, but yeah, very clear. I think it's going to be a range 2 shot though. So let's just exactly see. I think they're just double checking the positions and the hit points. So let's see how these rolls come through. No defence. Oh god! He's going to spend spend his foot he's going to spend his force and that actually is enough to take him out i think we must have missed one damage there perhaps from him going through an asteroid field earlier um horton going then straight into night beast or is he going to go into the grand inquisitor well, it doesn't really matter with a roll like that it's defended anyway even with the re-roll nothing doing there
into Horton, gets an extra defense because of long range, not that it matters, gets no defense anyway, um, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> we go into the top of round seven, then closing things out, it looks like, um, at least there's some decent positioning ending up from the Imperial player now. Daz hasn't been able to really get the, uh, the Grand Inquisitor in into much. Kicking off with Nightmares moving first. He's going through the Asteroid um, and takes a damage. I think we missed that. I think we miscounted his hit points. He should have probably blown up there. Um, Inquisitor trying to avoid it. Takes a dodge. And Luke swinging back around. So it's really only the Horton and Night Beast that have got line of sight on one another. Um, just checking to see if he gets the reroll. Um, well, unless he. Yeah, that is a definitive blow up. It didn't really affect things as he didn't get the shot off anyway. We, so going into the top of round eight, we have Horton moving forward. He's going to hit the asteroid and he doesn't take any damage. Then we have Luke going, swinging back round, but unfortunately hitting Horton, so no action. And then the Inquisitor is going to try and bank sharply. Oh, he's actually taloning so that he can try and get some firing arcs here. Um, he is going to be going first. He's going into the rear arc of Horton, who doesn't manage to roll any defense. Um, and manages to take a couple of damage, taking him down to two with the crit. Um, Horton firing um, backwards. No, sorry, Luke firing, trying to re-roll, got two damage. Manages to get a couple, but I think he's going to spend focus, uh, force rather, so he doesn't actually take anything. So, leading into round nine, we have... I'm trying to really decide what's going where. We've got Horton trying to swing back round. He's still got rear arc firing though. Grand Inquisitor lining up and target locking Luke and then Luke right up in his face. Let's see what happens here. So Luke defending against the Inquisitor. Um, he's going to spend a force just to take that off. Uh, but it still takes a couple off Luke's shields there. So Luke's down to zero shields, fires back. Um, but he has got some force to spend. So he's gonna do that. So it takes um, him down to one hit point, I believe, once the shields are taken into account. Oh, they all spend, they all spend their force. One damage left on the Inquisitor. So here we have Horton firing backwards with his cannon. Um, he's gonna have three hits, um, none initially. He's going to spend a target lock and get two, but that's going to be defended by the two. And then he gets one because of the range of Luke, which takes him out. Unbelievable. The rear cannon from the Y-Wing takes uh, the Grand Inquisitor out, and that is a win for the Rebels.